but it was a small cloud that came to bear witness about that a small movement a small shift when you are ministering under the anointing 70 percent of the time god will not be speaking words guys for me i don't know other people say they hear an audible voice i've heard audible voice only once in my own opinion god doesn't use audible voice too many times not too many times in your lifetime sir you know these things are experiential and it is my desire this year that the least among us we know the holy ghost so much in his experiential dimensions so that you know what is expected from you when a sensation in god is is felt you know the interpretation you know what is expected you know when to sit to when, when to stand when to run when to walk away just by the movements of the indwelling one many of us do not look to him to know what he's doing inside and most times we are as confused as the average unbeliever because the revelation of the fact that the holy spirit dwells has not yet been imparted now when you are ministering i don't know you hear the voice of god frequently you just see signs signals signs signals maybe you have it one vision sign signals one vision sign 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 signs and through that sign he said there's somebody on this road he didn't tell me there's somebody i just felt it he was pointing here i wanted to go here but something it, then I move, I move, I move, I move, I move. Then I begin to look at the people. I begin to look. And then I see this one with red. And it begins to do like this. Inside. Inside. And I say, as I'm moving, then it begins to speak. But we despise the sense of inner life. And we expect to be in tune with God. No, you not. That your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And that the spirit of God dwells. For the first three years after I married, almost every weekend I was traveling out to preach. All right? For three years I didn't know my wife. Until I was posted to Lagos. Then I carried them. Then I now dwelt. <laughs> I said, oh, this is it. This is who you are. I didn't know. Sorry. You mean that thing I said? You didn't like it? I didn't know now. How will you know when you don't know that you are dwelling? So one day I now say, I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry. no problem. Do you know that you don't know when the Holy Spirit is doing like this inside of you? You don't know what He's saying because the revelation of His dwelling has not come to you. Now, you feel it in your spirit now. It's, it's stronger now. It's stronger. Uh, are you feeling that something is forming? Now, if you are feeling that something is forming inside, let me see. You are feeling that so something is forming. You are feeling it. I will show you how you minister to the sick. You don't just wake up and start ministering. Somebody must send you. And when he sends you, he may not tell you, go. God's inner voice. I hear God's voice frequently. There is a voice I hear. When he comes, then I feel something like cold water. If God uses that kind of speaking, it means he doesn't want me to doubt like when there's a cripple when i minister to a cripple pe person he will speak like that i'm raising the person then there'll be cold water so I, ah i know it's him i can come and quack. when somebody died and he wanted me to pray for the person to come back to life he said she will live again and i felt cold i, said, ah. I know this sign this sign means verily verily she will leave again so i can pull my suit and hang it take pure water i drink small i say then i move again i say what's her name why because the one dwelling inside has shown me enough signs 
that this one will come back to life. And when I move in the spirit, I don't guess. Because I know the one that dwells. I know him. I know when he moves, when he does his hands like this. I know when he's not happy. So I will not preach that day. I'll come down. It's not all about me. I hope you know it's not all about you. That if you are used of him, it's a privilege. Uh, uh, and he might decide not to anoint you one night. Meanwhile, you are the head pastor. It means you are not the one to preach. Come down. Many times during this conference, I've tried to preach many days. The oil didn't come. What, what will you do? Calm down. <laughs> mm, there's a way I feel if he's sending me. Don't wait to see a light. You may not see it in your lifetime. But if it's the signs of a dwelling man, you will have that every day. It's stronger now. At this level now, I can speak and people will receive impartation. These were the things he taught me for 10 years. Understanding the movements of my inner life. And if you are going on a crusade to preach on open air, the principalities have direct access to your mind. Direct access to your mind. Remember that. So you double the price before you go out. Because there will be spiritual distractions. So that you can be sensitive to what? The dwelling man. He taught me how to go out on crusades. I don't go out on crusade like a teacher. I go out like a dying man. And I'm standing on, a, on, on grace. Hallelujah. <laughs> Just waiting for him to point and I move. You see, I, when I shouted now, my spirit opened. And when my spirit opened, I saw somebody with stomach trouble. That God is already healing. There's a level to which his essence forms on your spirit. And takes hold of your heart that you will begin to manifest. Right now, my soul has been subdued, and the things I hear now is not from my soul. The things I hear now is from my spirit, because the one that is dwelling inside is rising up like a giant, like a champion. And when he rises like that, rise along. The greatest moments are not spectacular moments. The greatest encounters are not the encounters where you see light. No, don't look for light. You must have a special calling for him to be appearing like that. And even if he appears like that to you, the one that will make more meaning to you is the one you can understand. And it is easy for you every day to understand when him that dwells has risen up. That sometimes he will rise up like a warrior. You just get to a place and he and, and you, it's not as if you prayed but something rises inside you know that the one inside has risen don't go there and beg go there like, like an apostle with the authority of God ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. if you can know this one that dwells inside you will know that death will turn backward from you I've seen the spirit of death it came many times to cut me down but anytime he came, I was poor with might. It, it would have to reschedule and come for 11 years. I was poor with might. And I told my mother, if I didn't die, I won't die again. No, you're not. That's your body. How I wish we had time to go through those. I, I reduce it to three. But there are seven. Seven things. In working with the Holy Ghost. That you need to be conscious of. You don't know what happens when you pray in tongues. The oppression of Christ. What you are doing is what the apostles did when Jesus was in a boat sleeping. Because Jesus can be in your boat. He can be in you. And, and, and a, a, bad things will happen around you. 
But you must know how to wake him up. Because it's only when Jesus wakes up that he can contend with the storms around your life. So when you speak in tongues, what you are doing is that you are waking the one sleeping in the boat. You must know when he has risen up. Because we feel the warrior standing. At that time, he will begin to precipitate some things that you need to utter. Because he needs to use your mouth to speak. If you can articulate that which is precipitating and you give voice to it, it will travel with divine potency and angels will ride on it and works will be wrought by God. When you become filled, then you begin to receive the signs that God has given you. That one is not for today. Because our time is up. Okay, sit down. Let me give you five more minutes. After you have recognized, and all these things are revelations, it must come to you as a revelation that the Holy Ghost dwells in you. And then you accommodate it as a reality. You judge everything. You judge your lifestyle from the standpoint of that revelation. Because when you receive a revelation, it sticks with you. It stays with you like your lungs, like your liver, like your heart. A revelation will remain, but a thought will flee away. Are you still with me now? The second thing is that it must come to you as a revelation that the Holy Ghost is a person. I know you have heard that many times. How many of you have dogs here? Dogs, let me see your hand. All right. Have you ever taken your dog to your toilet? How many of you have taken your dog to your toilet before? And you say, oh, he wants to use the toilet. The reason why I have not done that is because the dog is not a person. See, the revelation of the fact that the Holy Ghost is a person has not come to us yet. So we don't know how to relate. Because if you know that the Holy Ghost is a person, it has come to you as a revelation, you'll be talking to him. I'm not just talking about praying. I mean talking. Lord, please. I don't know what you will do, but when I get to the office, let the boss not be there. I'm late. Can you do this one for me? Uh, I need, just help me. You know you are the stronger part of this partnership. And this is a limitation. My humanity cannot address this. Can you go and distract him? Distract him. Let him go to the toilet or something. Make him feel stomach pain right now. Lord Jesus. And suddenly you just come into the office. He's not there. Then you settle. When you come, say, all the way, sir. all the way, all the way, all the way. And then the Holy Spirit can even go for and confuse the man. He, he will even remember to ask you, ah, what's the time now? It's okay, that file, that file on Friday. Is it there? Oh, life goes on. Jeez. So you came through, Holy Ghost. But if you talk to him like that, you will see him every day. The reason why you are not talking to him is because you are not sure he's a person. You are not sure. You are not sure. I was in a vehicle. Normally, I, I travel fasting. I don't drink, I don't eat. Because I don't like saying, boss, stop. Let me ease myself. It looks embarrassing to me, you know. But one day, I, I, I ate. When we were getting to Lafia, my whole system, my stomach was here. And I was ashamed to tell the driver, can you stop? Hey, they will look at me and say, I say, Holy Ghost, you know, you don't like me to be suffering. <laughs> you are interested in the way I feel, but I'm feeling bad right now. And one guy in the back, close to me, said, stop this car now, stop it. And when the car stopped, I almost fly. The truth of the if you know, and the guy now say, Ah, see this guy, you now come, they run past me. Ah. He's a person, he's a person, he's a person, he's a person, he's a person. I've seen, I've seen the Holy Ghost walk with quiet communications like that. He's part of my life right now. I said, Lord, this headache, oh my God, this headache, this headache. And then he just begins to heal it. 
just begins to hit it. In fact, sometimes like that, you don't even discuss it. You just discuss with somebody and say, this is the need I have. And then in two days' time, he now missed that need exactly so that you know that he heard your discussion. He's a person. And if, he's, if he is a person that dwells in you, it means he's closer to you than your neighbor so he can pick your thoughts. And sometimes some of your thoughts come to pass because he heard your heart when those thoughts precipitated. He's closer to you than your breath. And if only you can know that he's a person. He's a person. He's a person. He's a person. I'll stop there for now. All of us know these things, but it has not yet downed on us as a revelation. So it's not part of you. It's not part of what you work with. It's not part of the strategies, the principles that your life is established upon. So you still do a lot of spiritual activity, but you cannot draw from the Holy Ghost. If God will ever give you anything, that which he wants to give is in the Holy Ghost. And I think the way if we improve our knowledge of him, our reception of the things that God is offering will be delivered. talk to him now you see in spiritual things we need to practicalize it holy spirit and now imagine that i'm talking inside every time i preach this is what i do as i'm preaching to you i'm saying show me somebody's problem now lord show me show me so i'm talking now saying, show me somebody's problem show me lord show me show me show me show me i'm seeing a vision now listen to me stop playing what you're doing I'm seeing a vision now of somebody's leg. The leg I'm seeing is the right. And there's somebody in this hall that normally has pain on the right leg. If you are the person, lift your hand up. You normally have pain on your right leg. Now, this one happened because I asked the Holy Ghost. Are you with me? I asked him. Do you know that if I did not ask him, there would have been no need. You wouldn't have considered it needful to reveal this to me. You know what he's telling me now? That there are two people in this hall that the devil actually intended that in February they will, have an, they will be involved in an accident. In February. There's somebody that used to have migraine headache. A side of your head pains you. Where are you? Now, this is real. I talk to him every day. He talks to me every day. And I know his voice because I know he's a person and I know he indwells me and he's closer to me than my wife so he can actually pick my thoughts. He can pick my prayers from my heart, not from my lips because it's possible for me to be saying something and my heart is saying something else. He will not pick it from the lips. Men will hear the one that came from the lips but he will look upon the heart. And many people are wondering why their prayers are not coming to pass. What you are saying in your heart is different from what you are saying on the lips. Because except prayer affects your whole being, your spirit, your soul, and your body, it doesn't strike a chord. There's something I invented. I shake people like this. Then, as I'm shaking them, but they don't know, as I'm shaking them, I'm asking God, show me, show me about this man, show me now. 70% of the time, he shows me. And if he doesn't show me a bit, I will be plain to you that I didn't see anything. A time came when people believed that if I shake people, I must see something. Why? The simple trick is this. As I'm shaking, I'm asking, is there anything you want me to know about this man? And I'm not a prophet by calling. So what I'm doing, I'm not doing it from the special grace of the prophetic office. I'm doing it from the prophetic unction that is available to every believer. There's no special prophetic dimension attached to this oppression. It's just intimacy with the Holy Ghost and the attendant results that follows. Okay, because if, if John Fah does that, you say, okay, he's a prophet. So this is how prophets are. I'm doing it as a believer. Because I'm not a prophet.
When you operate in intimacy with the Holy Spirit, before danger comes, you will know. It doesn't happen to you. You see danger before it comes. You just wake up and you're praying and then you just lose your peace. And if you lose your peace in a sustained manner, it means there's danger coming. In fact, it means that the danger that is coming, your prayer can't stop it. But your prayer will reduce its impact. But it will still manifest. You must know how to design the movements of the inner life. Can you stand up? These things, there's nothing, there's nothing mysterious about it. These revelations, these revelations that I'm talking about, knowing that God indwells you, working with it. Now, I will teach those seven things and I want you to begin to practice it. Practice talking to the Holy Ghost. And that's why when God speaks in split seconds, I say, live here now. I know that voice and I will escape danger. Because I'm used to hearing him speak on casual issues. When he speaks on a serious issue and there's a tone of urgency attached to it, I know there's danger and I move. Those are the advantages of intimacy that the average believer doesn't have because the revelation of the fact that God is a person has not yet come to him. He hears Benny Hinn say it. He hears so many preachers say it. But it's not a revelation to him yet. It's not part of his lifestyle. That revelation does not influence his decisions. Let us not boast that we know God yet. Don't boast. Go back. And those seven things I will teach, put it on your phone. Listen to it for three months. Forge it into your lifestyle. We will come here one day and before I preach a scripture, you know where I will preach from. Before I make a statement, you know where I will talk from. So I'm not telling you anything new. I'm just bringing witness to you. And the day a preacher that is not in tune with God comes, you will also know. Hallelujah. I heard that one from heaven. Strike. Just be playing. Now, I will teach you how to hear heavenly music. There's no mystery to it. I will teach you how to know that angels are present. I will teach you how to fight. If you are in a place that is infested by demons, I will show you what to do. This year, everybody must do the works of Jesus. This year. Forget that I am an apostle. Forget that. Every believer can operate in the supernatural. And God has given, taught me many things for many years and he has given me the mandate to begin to teach it now. My secrets in the spirit. I will show you all. Because I want people that are stronger than myself to rise from this place. So that we can trouble the kingdom of darkness. I know that the Holy Ghost is a person. I know that he dwells in me. I know he's closer to me than my bread so I can speak to him and he will hear me. When last did you speak to the Holy Ghost and you had faith that he was hearing you? If you didn't have faith that he heard you, it means you don't know he's dwelling in you. I was in a car, in a vehicle. And I, I went to preach in a village. When I preached, I said, Satan, you can meet me on the road. And he kept the appointment. I was going back and we just heard, po, 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 po. And then the steering had his own wheel. It was going 360, but it was not moving the tire. And the thing would do, and that's how we, from one place. And I said, Jesus. And I sat down. Once is a, if you know the indwelling one, once is enough. But if you don't know him, you say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It means you are, it's only the mercy of God that will help you. My own was not mercy. My own, I know the person I was speaking to. When 
I say Jesus, the woman by my side said, I will be lying. Hey, oh, quack. <laughs> Once, and I knew inside he had me. So I sat back to watch the drama. And that's how we moved. We moved. It was dry season, but somebody went to the farm and cultivated some few ridges. It was those ridges he cultivated that became the cushion. So the Holy Ghost had already gone overnight, told somebody to go and farm. Farm where, where? Because tomorrow, I will need to use your ridges. And when we said, Jesus, the angels directed the car without staring. It was where the farm was that they came. If you know that power, and you stand up in the night and say, Hey! You will know that some things will stop. A woman that was involved in adultery, I happened to meet her on the road, meet her somewhere, and I said, This is what I see. And I began to tell her her life, and she knelt down. So I prayed for her. She now went back. I said, Repent. And after you have repented, don't do that again. Then I prayed for her. Then the night, demons came to carry her. He said the demons carried her to Ghana. So when she escaped, she called me and said, Pastor, they don't come carry me. Then I just say, Sss. Then I off the phone. And I offed it. The next morning, she said, when I said, Sss. all the demons left. You know why? I know the way the indwelling one was sitting. I will not say any time but there's a time i will say that because i know his movement there were people that were sick that that i came and he just told me just hold the hand and shake it don't pray just shake it you will not advance in the healing anointing until you know how to hear because it's not by power it's not by might but it's by the Spirit of God. Can you put one hand on your head and begin to pray? That God in 2012 give me a deeper understanding of the Holy Ghost. Let me see Let me see you let me see Let me see you Lord. Let me see Let me see you Lord. Let me see Let me see you Lord. Let me see let me see you, Lord. Let me see. Let me see you, Lord. Oh, 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 Let me see you Lord. Let me see. Let me see you Lord. Oh, 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 oh,
let me see your hands on your heads and people removed it. <laughs> mm. My friend told me now that he will open the eyes of two people and he will give them the gift of discernment of spirit. I could see. Listen, listen, listen. listen. Because the warrior is standing now. The Lord is standing. The Lord can be standing and I will be sitting but I know he's standing. So if I decree, it will happen. There's an evangelist here. This evangelist, an anointing, will pick you out. You don't need to believe. My friend told me. Lift your hands. That hand that you put on your head. I want to identify the people that he spoke to me about. Now watch it. Strange things will happen. Strange things. Strange things. Strange things. Strange things. Strange things will happen. Strange things. Strange things. 
is my friend he told me alright let me pray Lord those ones that you said you will give them the gift of discernment of spirits I don't know them but you know them you say you begin to open their eyes so make them see into the realm of the spirit Holy Ghost Holy Ghost Holy Ghost is here. He has started. He has started. He has started. He has started. Holy Ghost. 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 Move. Now bring them. It's just my friend talking to me. It's me and my friend. It's just me and my friend. There's nothing difficult about all these things. Nothing. Nothing. It's just a proof that God is real. It's just a proof. You will see from today. You will see now. As as he as as he goes down. As he goes down. Wait, first, wait, sorry. As he goes down, she will now settle. Wait, I'm teaching you something. She will settle. As she said to us now, she will see a vision before she stands up. Her eyes will open. You see, now look first, look, open your eyes. You see that something is shaking her. Is that power that wants to craft visions into her? This shaking now. Do you understand? It's the power. That power came when my friend spoke to me and I obeyed him to say this is what he said then the power was released are you hearing me ah are you here when my friend spoke to me i believed him then i said what he said then his power that's the secret of the miraculous if you don't know him as the indwelling man you will not hear words from his mouth he, am i the one doing this i'm just obeying my friend Raise them up. Raise this one, sir. You know, I told you about an evangelist. Oh, you are not here. See, we are in a classroom. I'm teaching. What I'm doing is teaching. Please, don't be distracted. It's not a miracle service. I'm just teaching. Do you understand? This, I spoke about an evangelist. How many of you heard that? Now, you see, the reason why I'm not rushing is because I've already received that word. And as long as that word is with me, it must happen. Because my friend told me. If you begin to talk to the Holy Spirit consistently and regularly, it will be easy for you to know when he's talking to you. If you obey it, power will be released. And any one of us can have that power. Don't think it's only me know my desire is that every one of us will have it and begin to affect our cities and villages now what this young lady you see my friend's power thank you sir. my friend's power as i came now my friend will begin to walk now did i touch her i just came so my friend is walking see my friend he's walking is walking now please leave her my friend wants to do something my friend is walking i didn't say anything did i say anything he's walking that's my friend this is my friend that one too now did i do anything there you're not with me you this class is not following oh my god are you in this class today The response is bad. This blue trousers. This is what you can do. I'm showing you what you can do. But you still believe that is for the pastors. The reason why I did the teaching is so that you can know that this is for us in Christ Jesus. Now, watch my friend. See, as I'm standing here, my friend will not walk because I don't want to. I don't want him to walk. But now, I'm here. I want my friend to walk. Believe her. I want my friend to walk. 
I'm not touching her. I, I, I just want it inside. I'm desiring it. That he should walk. You see, I'm desiring it now. I'm telling my, my friend, I'm here now. So let's walk. Let's walk. Let's walk. Let's walk, my friend. Let's walk. Let's walk now. It's time for you. See, am I doing anything? I'm not doing anything. I'm just partnering with you. I'm partnering with my friend. Don't worry. The next crusade we are going, you will see wonders. Because God likes moving outdoor more than indoor. If we see these ones inside here, I, I've seen two dead men rise from the dead. I'm afraid of nothing. Once my friend speaks, <laughs> and God has told me that I will raise many dead people. Many dead, some people two days dead, he said I will raise them. And recently he has said that the grace of raising the dead has come well now. It's my friend that's you may not believe it, it's not your business then when i go for that because my friend is laying hands on her now and i, I go for that and, and i lay my own hand then my friend begins to pass through my hand begins to pass begins to pass okay my friend now told me that he wants to activate her to prophesy that's what my friend said that she's going to begin to prophesy she's going to prophesy she's going to prophesy she's going to prophesy she will prophesy she will prophesy she will prophesy she will sleep watch just be watching it's my friend now another person too the spirit of prophecy has landed on somebody else now 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 how do i know my friend talks See the see another one now. She will prophesy this. How do I know this? Oh, please, are you sick in the class? Are you here? You are now let the wind of, of, of the prophetic the wind of the prophetic let everyone that have the prophetic anointing in this hall begin to feel the wind 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 move who is spotting this one now it's my friend. Friend that is doing this work. Who is touching this lady? It's my friend. Yeah. Who is walking here? Who is doing this? Who is doing this here? Who is doing this? Who is doing this?
you are not under the power, listen. Now, you, you don't want the lecture to continue. I've not finished. Please listen. Can you listen? Forget the people that are under the power. Just hear me. Can you hear me? If you are here, say amen. I saw my friend. He took my, my coat and he put it on this man. Listen. Here, here, here. Here. In six months' time, this man will begin to do what I'm doing. Even if you don't believe it, you will see. My friend will begin to do. And when he came on you, he moved. And he came on him. You see this one? He will do what I'm doing. I saw those two. I can't add any other one because that's what I saw. 